have to remember that next time. Okay. Um, like they said, I'm, I'm the keeper at the House of Refuge Museum on Hutchinson Island. Trigger finger. Okay, so we're called Gilbert Farr House of Refuge Museum. We were built in 1875 and we were finished on March 10, 1876. This is basically what the building looked like and it's real similar to what it looked like back then. Um, we're built on the St. Lucie Rocks. That's probably one reason why we're still there today, but it's also one of the reasons we were built because um, we were built because they were having problems with shipwrecks back in the early 1800s. Um, so the ships, because of the big shipping lane that the Gulf Stream is, uh, the ships would wreck on our shores during storms. Our reefs are right offshore. The water's nice and warm usually. Um, and so the survivors with the shipwreck, people would survive the shipwreck and make it safely to shore just to get to shore and starve to death. Florida was a wilderness back then. We had bears on the island. We had mosquitoes, alligators, wildcats, and no fresh water. It just wasn't a very nice place, and no people. So um, this man, uh, his name was Sumner Kimnell. He was the uh, head of the United States Life Saving Service. And he came up with the idea of uh, houses of refuge. And what he did is he put in, put in 10 houses of refuge from roughly north of, da uh, north of Daytona down to Miami. Uh, he hired a man to live in each one. He was the keeper, kind of like a lighthouse keeper. His job was to patrol the beaches after the storms, pick up the survivors, bring them back, nurse them back to health, feed them and clothe them until he could ship them out on another boat. And we also had the lighthouse, the future lighthouse. Um, we have a problem with our name. They named all the houses after a local landmark. There's one north of here called Mosquito Lagoon. I thought, what a lovely place to live, Mosquito Lagoon. Um, but ours is Gilbert's Bar, and even today we have people calling and asking what time happy hour is. <laughs> and when the band starts. And I always say, you know what, we need to, we need to brew our own beer, we'd make a lot more money. <laughs> but Gilbert was a pirate. The sandbars in front of the House of Refuge are named after Gilbert. He was a pirate in the uh, late 1700s, early 1800s. He was kind of late for a pirate. He um, worked the waters off the House of Refuge. He would come up into the inlet with his ship. He had a ship called the Penda, and it was painted all black. He would lure um, ships into the reefs. They would break up. He would go out. He would kill the crew, take the cargo, and burn the ship. He got away with it for a long time because his motto was, dead cats don't mute. He always killed everybody. So he finally made a mistake. He was up off the New England coast. He ran into this ship called the Mexican. The Mexican had $20,000 $20, worth of silver on it. He took the silver, he put the crew down in the hull of the ship, he locked them in, and he set the ship on fire. And he left. Somehow they got out and they saved the ship. They got back to shore, they turned him in. They're finally looking for him. The British actually found him, they found him in Africa. He had taken that uh, $20,000 worth of silver and he went to Africa to buy slaves with it. I say, what a nice guy. Somebody you want to name something after. <laughs> um, so they blew up his ship, and they took him and most of the crew back to the United States. He was tried in a maritime court in Boston, and he was one of the last pirates to be hung in the United States in 1836 in Boston. The only people they didn't hang were the cabin boy and the cook and one other person. So this is what uh, Gilbert's Bar House and Refuge, what they think it looked like when it was originally built. We don't have any ori good original photos of it, but we do have photos of other houses. They were all built alike, and we just kind of put a composite together and said, we think this is what it looked like. It had, each house of refuge had four rooms downstairs. They had a living room, a, a dining room, a bedroom, and, and a kitchen. Um, and then the upstairs, that was where the keeper lived. The upstairs was a big loft, um, and it uh, is where they had cots and provisions for any kind of any sailors that they, uh, they rescued. This is a, a picture of the house uh, after <coughs> 1915. In 1915, uh, they added those dormer windows on either side. 
originally it had two windows, one on each end, and they said the upstairs was so hot you couldn't stand to be up there, that they didn't sleep up there, they slept anywhere else but up there. Here's another picture of the house. Um, the living conditions weren't so great. Uh, they weren't, they were great and they weren't so great. Um, if you were a pioneer in the area at the time, you, uh, the House of Refuge jobs were sought after jobs because it was a government job. You got paid $40 a month and you got a house. A lot of the other people were living in palmetto shacks and driftwood huts and waiting for their first pineapple crop to come in. So this was a sought after job. It was a good job. Um, the only thing about bad about it was providing your own provisions from Stewart. The closest place was Titusville to get your provisions. It took two weeks by sailboat. One guy went up there and he didn't come back for two months because they had two hurricanes in the meantime. I said, wouldn't you like to be his wife? <laughs> he sails off and you don't know, he doesn't come back, you don't know if he got killed in the hurricane or if he just decided he'd had enough and he just kept <laughs> sailing. So these people here, the, the man on the end there, he is a, a Catan. He was in the Biscayne House of Refuge. This is one of the Catans. That family lived in Stewart for many years. And this one is, I'm sorry, he was from one of the northern houses of refuge. I think it was uh, Chester Shoals. And this was the Biscayne House of Refuge keeper at one time and his family. So some of them had families and some of them uh, had were bachelors and stuff. I say the bachelors probably had, you know, two crates and a table and a bed. But the families, they had nice furniture and uh, they raised their kids there and it was a nice place to grow up. This is one of our keepers. His name was Axel, Axel Johansson. He was started out as a, uh, a ship captain. He was shipwrecked at one of the, and he was saved by one of the uh, daughters of the Houses of Refuge north of the Stewart House of Refuge. He went back to sea for a couple of years, and then he came back and decided to marry that daughter. And he became one of the keepers at the House of Refuge in, in Stewart. Um, here's his oath of office that he signed. I was telling you about the bears on the island. We had a really bad problem with bears. Bears like turtle eggs. And during turtle season, the bears would swim to the island. This is uh, uh, some bears that a man shot on the island. If you look at it really close, it's a mama bear and three cubs. Uh, but I guess back then, a bear was a bear. So one of our keepers was, was Herbert Bessie. Mr. Bessie was a, uh, a boat builder, and he uh, built this boat over here, and he had a, a uh, boat building uh, business. Uh, he is also a, a guide. Uh, this is his wife sitting on the dock at the House of Refuge and her sister on the uh, riverside. And he would, uh, Grover Cleveland would come down, and he would take him to fishing. So that's Grover Cleveland in the middle there and their fishing party. Um, the houses of refuge were built to rescue shipwrecked sailors, and so this is one of the shipwrecks. The George's Valentine wrecked in 1904. It wrecked just about almost in front of the house of refuge. The cargo was mahogany. So all this mahogany washed up on shore, along with seven sailors who were beat up, their clothes were ripped off, their skin was ripped off, and uh, the keeper, uh, brought him in and, and nursed him back to health. The next day, there's another picture of it. You can actually see the House of Refuge in the background. All the local pioneers came out and they uh, gathered up all that wood and they took it out back and used it to build their houses and, and things. So we have actually have a mahogany ironing board at the House of Refuge that was made of. <laughs> so the next day, uh, Cosme Cazala went down about a mile north of the House of Refuge so um, those sailors were also brought to the House of Refuge. And uh, the keeper at the time, his name was Ray, and uh, he ended up with 22 sailors to take care of in one night. And um, he had not had anybody to take care of for three years. So it kind of comes and goes. Either you have nothing to do or you're overwhelmed. Also at the time, his wife happened to be out of town. She was in Atlanta. He, um, he uh, telegraphed her or whatever you did, said, honey, 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 come home, we have company. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So um, on the 100th anniversary of the George's Valentine, we did a memorial out uh, in front of the House of Refuge. It, uh, we also got it designated as a state underwater archaeological site. It's only about 300 yards offshore and about 15 to 20 feet of water, so we encourage people to go out there, snorkel out there, and look at the wreck today. So in 1915, we became a Coast Guard station. Uh, even though we were a Coast Guard station, they kept the keepers on, and uh, I think it stayed very similar to, uh, run very similar to how it had been in the past. Then we were one. Uh, there's some training with the breaches buoy. We actually still have this breaches buoy. Uh, they were replaced in 1961, I understand, was the last time one of those was used. With, I guess they were replaced with helicopters. <laughs> There's some more people at, at our House of Refuge practicing and working. Um, over the years, as uh, the ships began having uh, motors on them instead of sails, one of the keepers' job was to go out. He spent a lot of time going out and towing people in there, or whose boat motor broke down, or pulling them out in the river and stuff. This is one of the more, more interesting uh, rescues. This man was named Mr. Willoughby. He was an explorer. He explored the Everglades, but he also uh, had a seaplane, and he went down in the Indian River, and the keeper had to go rescue him. <laughs> so that was kind of an interesting rescue. So here they are, just adding the dormer windows I was telling you about. Uh, this is it during the Coast Guard. During the Coast Guard era, uh, the houses originally were, um, they gathered the water off the roof and they had cisterns that were in the ground. Uh, they added these cisterns later on. We still have our original cistern at the House of Refuge. Uh, in World War II, we had a problem with German submarines right off the coast blowing up ships. So we also had the Navy there. And the Navy patrolled the beaches at night on horses looking for uh, the submarines. We also they, we also had a lookout tower that most people think was a lighthouse, but it was a lookout tower. And our most after the what time's happy hour, everybody wants to know, can I go up in the tower? Yeah. That's the other most aspect. <laughs> so there's the tower. And the answer is no, but I leave at 4:15. <laughs> <laughs> So here's the here's the ships that the uh, the German submarines blew up. Yeah. Actually, it was three German submarines that did all this damage, and then they went home. There's a tanker that blew up right off the Jupiter. So in, um, after the war, they didn't need the houses of refuge, refuge anymore, so they decommissioned them and abandoned them. Ours is the last one of the ten of them standing. 1953, Martin County decided to buy the property. This is what it looked like. It was 16.8 acres of oceanfront property and riverfront property. They paid $500 for it. <laughs> Probably a good deal even in 1953. So it became a museum. But, uh, the Historical Society of Martin County was formed and they turned it into a museum. Uh, one, of the, one of the obligations of the county when they bought the property in the, in the contract with the, with the government says that we will take care of William Lewis Bartling, who is a squatter on the property. So this man had lived on the property in a boat that was uh, bottomed out on the riverside. He was a shipwreck survivor that just never left. And um, they figure that he's the reason that the place didn't get burned down by vandals or teenagers over the years that it was abandoned. So they, um, that was one of the stipulations that the county had to take care of this man until he passed away. The carriage big stick. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is it after in the early uh, 50s or the late 50s. This is what the inside looked like. We had lots of nautical equipment that was given to us by the Navy. Uh, they gave us like two tons of equipment, and um, over the years, most of it has rusted away. I think we have an anchor left. 
Um, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, we had a sea turtle program at the House of Refuge. This man, um, Ross Witham, he would go out and gather the eggs off the beach, hatch them, raise the turtles till they were a year or two old, and then let them go in the ocean to give them a head start. Um, we had hundreds of turtles in different stages of growth all over the property um, in different tanks. Uh, they have discontinued that program uh, because the turtles are doing so well on the beaches now that they don't need it. In 1974, we, came, we were put on the National Register. Um, in 2000, yeah. <laughs> so, and Francis and Jean came in September. I think I have a date wrong there. It was 2004 for both of them. They were, uh, but we were like ground zero for the for um, the, where they hit. This is I actually am the last keeper that ever lived at the House of Refuge. Um, I was living out there when uh, Francis and Jean came through. This is the sunrise, the day Hurricane Francis came through. Isn't that pretty? This is the road the day after. <laughs> That's the day after Hurricane Jean. That's the main road down Hutchinson Island. The people south of the hut, this is the road just south of the House of Refuge. Everybody that lives south of the House of Refuge they had to go by boat for six months until they rebuilt the road. So this is them, this is standing in the House of Refuge property. This is them redoing the whole south end of the island. We were closed for two years, even though the actual building uh, received very little damage. This is the House of Refuge after the hurricane. It, um, like I said, it received very little damage. The houses north and south of us were demolished, and one of them had to be totally torn down and rebuilt. Uh, but we did pretty good. We just looked like we had been sandblasted. Um, the House of Refuge is actually built on a Native American uh, midden. We had Indians living there back a couple of thousand years and up to the mid-1700s. Uh, they were called the Ace or the Ice or the Ice, and the little, what little we know about them is a first-hand uh, account by Jonathan Dickinson, who was shipwrecked in the area, and he was um, traded off by the natives until they got up to St. Augustine. So basically, he walked to St. Augustine. He had his family. Uh, he was on his way to uh, Philadelphia to open a store, so he had his family with him, his six-month-old baby, and a crew, and uh, so that's how we know about the. Uh, Native Americans of, the, of that area. So after the hurricane, a lot of the area they thought were sand dunes were actually Indian middens. If you look at all that shell, uh, there's layers of shell were exposed as, as where the Indians uh, were living. And that's basically leftover dinner there. And they would just eat the shells and pile them up. So then we had Hurricane Wilma. Had a little damage there. But this is what it looks like today. After the hurricanes were over, they uh, redid the house. They did, redid the wall on the outside of it. They put in a nice uh, patio there. Uh, you can see the cistern. It's by the tower. It's the round thing there. And uh, if you look real close at our patio, the, original, the house originally sat actually where the patio is now. We have an outline where the house originally sat. And it was in line with the cistern. They were having trouble in the 30s with the water actually washing in the windows. So they picked the whole house up and moved it back 30 feet to where it is today. So now that we have that nice patio, we have weddings and events at the House of Refuge. It's a lovely place to get married as long as it's not rainy and windy. <laughs> uh, we also have a uh, lecture series that's going on right now. Uh, we have a breakfast one and an evening one during the uh, season. Our first, uh, our first. Uh, Lecture person is Annie Potts, one of your members, and she gave her first talk last Wednesday. And her next one's going to be this Wednesday night, this Thursday night at seven. If anybody, we have three or four tickets left. If anybody still like to come, it's fifteen dollars. Uh, we are part of the Historical Society, which runs the Elliott Museum and the House of Refuge. The Elliott Museum is about a mile away. They have a, a large antique car collection, baseball, maritime, local history, and uh, 
Ralph Evandrude and Francis Langford used to live uh, in Martin County, so we have a lot of information on them. service at the time. Okay. In 1939, the Coast Guard, the Life Houses became part of the Coast Guard, which had already absorbed the Life Saving Service, but when the Houses of Refuges were active, that was earlier. So they were kind of sister services, but separate at the time that they were active. What's your hours? We're open from uh, 10 to 4, Monday through Saturday, and 1 to 4 on Sunday. I left some brochures on the table, so anybody interested, there's a dollar off. 